Hello, my name is H.A. E. Pruitt and I'm the author of Anna Thalian. And in this video and in the next couple videos I make in the next couple weeks, I want to share a little bit with you about self-publishing, how to, some tips about self-publishing. And so the first thing, I want to say two things before I start. Um, the first thing is Anna Thalian is neither a traditionally published book nor a self-published book. I um, published Anathalian through Elm Hill, which is a division of HarperCollins, a traditional publisher. But Elm Hill is their division that is like half and half. And so I learned a lot about self-publishing while learning a lot about traditional publishing. So um, I do have some insight into both. And the second thing I want to tell you is what I share in these videos is going to be completely me sharing from my experience. I'm not an expert at all, I don't pretend to be, but I learned a lot while publishing a book. And so I want to share it because the world of publishing is big and scary and confusing and I, I just want to share it. And also because um, my friend on Instagram, Karina's Adventures, asked me to and it was a good idea. So, so let's get started. In this video, I want to tell you about book proposals. And if you know anything about book proposals, you're probably like, what right now? Because book proposals have nothing to do with self-publishing. Book proposals are what you send in to literary agents or publishing companies, I suppose you call them, to ask them to traditionally publish your book. And really, you don't have to make a book proposal if you want to do self-publishing. At least I don't think you do. Um, but I didn't know how I was going to publish Anathalian at all. So I thought maybe it was traditional when I first started out this process. And so I did make a book proposal, but when it switched over to being the half traditional, half self-publishing with Elm Hill, I found that my book proposal and all the information I put in there was extremely useful for marketing because writing the book is the easy part. Even if it feels hard, it's going to be the easy part. Marketing is the hard part of publishing, especially self-publishing, because you got nobody to help you and tell you how to market yourself. And so, book proposal. I'll use mine as an example. I don't know who I got this template from. I can't remember. It's been many years. <laughs> it's been many years. But I just, I think my husband just got on the internet and he found a sample of how to make a book proposal and I read through it. And I made mine for Anathalian from it. So you're going to have, a book proposal has several parts. You're going to have your cover letter to your publisher and you don't really have to make that if you're doing it just for your own information. It has a title page to be fancy. Then it has the book information, which is what I'm going to tell you about. And then it has a two page summary of your book in it and then 50 pages of your sample. So if you want to do traditional, that's what a book proposal has in it and you can Ask me in the comments about the other parts if you want to do that. You can ask me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. But today, in this video, I'm just going to talk about the book information that will be helpful to you whether you do traditional or self-publishing. So, um, this book proposal is going to be helpful for you to see your book through someone else's eyes, through your reader's eyes, through your publisher's eyes, through a marketer's eyes. So you can see it a little bit a little differently because you know your book is your baby and you love it and you love it because you love it but if you're gonna sell your book to people you've got to realize what's gonna make them love it about it so first on here I've got the one sentence summary and you want to do a one sentence summary just purely the whole story told in one sentence that's hard but it's good to have it in case people are like what's your book about you can tell them in one sentence what your book is about. Mine for Anathalian, mysterious necklaces transport four teens to a land called Anathalian in order to save it from from a forgotten evil. That's the whole summary of the book in one sentence. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's more informational. The fancy comes later. Um, then your profile of your reader or your target audience. You want to know this for your book. Start out with what's the genre of your book? Anathalian is fantasy, um, fiction fantasy, Christian fiction fantasy. Um, the genre, if you don't know what genre your book might fit into, think about what is in it. Anathalian is um, 
Christian fiction fantasy because it's a Christian allegory, because it's a fantasy world, and because the main characters are young adults, and so it's a young adult Christian fiction fantasy book. Um, to know what real genres are, because we can make up anything um, we want, what category my book fits into, but to know the genres that are recognized in the book world, um, BISAC codes. B-I-S-A-C codes. All capitals BISAC codes. You can look them up on the internet. When you turn over a book and look on the little barcode here, above it, there's going to be a big word and then a couple smaller words. And that's going to tell you the genre of your book. Mine says fiction. That's the big heading category. And then Christian and fantasy are the more subheadings genres. And so to really know what genre your book fits in, that's how you'll know um, what genres exist to go to the BISAC codes, but then figure out why your book fits into that and put that in your um, book information, book proposal. See, my profile, my reader, I tell why it's a young adult and I explain that. And then also, um, you want to know your target audience. Like mine, if it's young adult, you figure that out. A lot of the times, children's books, um, genres will tell you exactly who your target audience is. But your target audience is important because that's going to play into marketing immensely. It's going to tell you where to market. It's going to tell you who to market. But we'll get into that later. But you want to figure out who's going to read my book. Is it going to be kids? Is it going to be... Um, middle grade kids? Is it going to be young adults? What does that even mean? Look it up. It's on the internet and you'll know what all those different age categories of books are. Or older adult. There's, there's tons. Um, but hopefully you'll know when you write your book and read your book who this would appeal to the most. And then also I've got some additional readers because everybody wants everybody to love their book. And so think about who else might like your book. Young adults would like my book because the main characters are teenagers, but also anyone who likes Christian allegories, like anyone who likes Narnia, would like enjoy my book because it's that, it's that kind of thing. I won't get into that now. I'd love to, but I won't. Um, so think of anybody else. Think of your main target audience, but then do think of others. Don't just say everybody would love my book because everybody's not going to love your book. I wish they would, but they won't. So really think about it and write who is going to like your book, what genre your book fits in, and and why it is that, and make that into a little nice paragraph. Um, then the next thing in a book proposal is the overview and comparable books. That means tell what books your book is like and why. Um, try to pick at least three books that your book is similar to and compare and contrast them. Say, my book is like the Chronicles of Narnia because it's a Christian allegory, but it's different than the Chronicles of Narnia because the characters are not kids, they're teenagers, and um, it uses different symbols. Um, there's, I've written down bunches of mine that it compares to, but make sure you compare and contrast because you want to realize who is going to read your book. If other people read those books, they might want to read your book. But you also want to make sure, how does my book stand out? How is it unique? So find something it's similar to and something that it's not like when each book you pick that your book is like. And and please don't say that, oh, my book is so unique and there's nothing like it. That'd be really nice. But your book probably is like some other books. So research it if you don't know. I didn't know because I don't read a lot. I'm really busy. Um, so I didn't read a lot. So I researched it and I found lots of books that I could compare and contrast. So don't say it's unique and there's nothing like it because there probably is something like it. All right. So next is the promotional sentence. This is the one sentence that not only tells your whole plot, but it draws in your audience. It's more than just your one sentence summary of just, this is what it is. It's, well, for example, mine is, four unwilling heroes find themselves in a faraway land where the past has been forgotten and evil secretly reigns. You see, there's a little bit more draw to it. You're like, oh, you know, evil secretly reigns. That sounds kind of interesting. Make your promotion sentence something that will draw in your audience. And remember, go back to your target audience. If they're young adults, play up whatever young adults like. Um, so next 
is the sales handle. This is another one sentence thing. And it's like the catch attention. It's like the logo. It's like the thing people put across the TV when they're advertising their product or their company. Um, mine, and always you can change this because this is for you. Um, I started off with sometimes beginning the journey means releasing everything you know. It doesn't tell about the book, but it's this, this sentence that's like, oh, what is this about? And I changed it to what's on the back of my book. If you ever wanted something different, Anathalian is waiting. And that just kind of catches your attention like, I need to read a little bit more about this. It doesn't have to tell much about the plot at all. It's just something that, that draws attention. That's your sales handle. Um, the back cover copy or your synopsis is the big dog. It's the thing that goes here. It's the thing people are going to, it's the thing people will read whenever they pick up your book to know if they want to read it or not. So this, your synopsis, your back cover copy is very, very important. It needs to be a summary. It needs to be about 75 words. Start with 75. It's hard to narrow your whole book down to 75 words, but start with 75. And if you have room, you can add some more. Um, but make sure you provide enough information about your book to stir interest, but not so much that people feel like, well, I already read it. I don't need to read what's actually in the book. So that's very important. Work a lot on your synopsis and make it awesome. Um, also, the next thing is purpose for writing or your motivation for writing. You want this for you. So you remember, why am I writing this book? So whenever you start marketing and you start advertising and you start trying to sell, you don't feel like, I'm just using people. I just want people's money. You remember, no, I wrote this for a purpose. I wrote this. My purpose is because my purpose is kind of complicated because I don't want to write a book. Um, but just in summary, I didn't want to write the book, but God wanted me to because it's this story that draws people to him. And so my motivation is to obey God because God wants people to be drawn to him. And that's important to me. And if you remember that, I'm not advertising because I want people's money, but I'm advertising because I want people to know God or whatever's important to you, then that will help you stay grounded and not, you know, get greedy or get your head spinning off somewhere else. But remember, this is why I'm doing this. This is why this is so important and I've got to keep doing this. Um, and you can tell other people that too, like I did in my series, The Story Behind the Story. And if they have the same motivation as you, that will help people be like, maybe I want to read this too because that author shares my my heart. So it's a good thing to know and write down and know. Um, the protagonist quest and what is at stake. The protagonist quest is um, what your main characters are doing. What is at stake is if your protagonists fail, what's going to happen. And you want to know those because you want to make sure there's something people relate to. Like if I was writing for little kids. I wouldn't want my protagonist quest to be something about, um, like it is an Anathalian, to be striving to end the reign of evil. Because evil's kind of a abstract concept. So you don't want to tell kids this abstract concept is what my characters are doing. They can't relate to it. If you're writing for an older adult audience, you don't really want to go with the fantasy because they're like, that doesn't teach me anything. You know, I want to learn something. I want to be educated. It's it's, it's kind of hard to think about what your reader might think about, but try to make sure that whoever your target audience is matches what your characters are doing. It's relatable to them. And hopefully what your main characters are doing is relatable to more than just your target audience because fighting against evil is in a lot of stories. And so that's pretty relatable because we all fight against what we feel is evil all the time and so anybody could relate to that and that's a good protagonist quest and what is at stake kind of thing um and then the takeaway value or your felt need okay so your felt need is huge 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 a felt need that is what about your book is necessary for people so the easy example um a parenting book that's my bread i gotta go eat my bread Okay, the bread's okay. So, felt need. This is really important. Your felt need in your book is what is 
what is necessary for your reader in your book, in a parenting book. What's necessary is how to parent. In a cookbook, it's how do I make food. It's that thing in people that they want that is going to draw them to your book. People want to be good parents. People want to make delicious food. In Anathalian, my felt need is something different. That's kind of abstract, but whenever Elm Hill was teaching us about felt needs and what that meant and everything, um, I just realized, kind of looking back through my life, what drew me to these, this imaginary world of Anathalian was I just wanted to be somewhere different. And then through high school, everyone you know, live in a small podunk town and everyone's like, I just want something different. I just want to get out of here. I just want to go somewhere different. And then growing up, you hear people with jobs that they don't really like. And they're like, man, I just want something different. And anathaline is that. It's something different. And so that's what your felt need is. That thing in people that drives them to do things, that drives them to read books, that drives them to want to get this information. That's your felt need. And so the takeaway value is the felt need um, of something different, of something more. And so in mine, from Anathalian, readers will learn that tying yourself to God results out results in living out a purpose bigger and more important than yourself. And also that as followers of God, we must tell others about him. That I didn't say something different in that, but that living out a purpose, like I want my life to be something more than this. I want my life to have purpose. I want to know what to do with my life. I want something different. I want something more. So that takeaway value or that felt need is what you want to just think about a lot whenever you read your book, what you get out of it, what you learn, how you grow as a person. That that felt need is really important. And also, um, I just added um, in the book proposal stuff, I've added favorite quote. Because that's that's kind of fun, and you will use it in marketing. My favorite quote in my book is one I've used often in Instagram posts and Facegram, Facegram posts. Yeah, let's make that up. Facegram posts um, to to get people to be like excited about it. And so, anything else you think of to that would create excitement in your reader, you think is necessary for you to know to think like a marketer. Put that in your book proposal. Make your book proposal, or if you want to just call it my book information. On my computer, it's saved as Anathalian Stuffs. Um, get together this information so you know about your book. And you know everything you need to know about your book. Become an expert on your book. That is my first self-publishing or traditional publishing tip. Be an expert on your book by compiling a document of the information. The book information. So that's all I'll do for now. Bye for now. Hi, if you want to know more about Anna Thalian, please follow me on Instagram. Um, check out my Facebook page. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit my website at hapruitt.com. Thanks for watching.